Hey, y'all. Hey. This is April. Hey. I'm going to try to talk to you guys in the afternoon on a live. How about that? You all might be at work, and some of you, you just have to catch it later. Um, but I just want to say hey. Uh, I think it's about 1, a little bit after 1 p.m. Eastern time. And so I'm just going to um, tag a few of you in. And whoever can join us, welcome. Whoever can't, um, whoever has to catch it later, I'll record it for you. But um, happy, what is this, Thursday? Happy Thursday to you. I did a, um, a little survey in my video on yesterday. And a lot of you want it live. So let's see how this goes. Normally I'm like a live on the weekend because I know people are more settled in. And people are kind of just hanging out doing their own things on Saturdays and Sundays. So I thought I was just going to do the live then. So but I'll try it today and see who's on with me. Um, uh, tell me if you're on with me. Hey, happy Thursday. I'm just going to share a little snippet, just a little quick uh, snippet devotional with you. Um, who's on with me? Okay. I'll just wait a few a few minutes. See who's all gonna join me. Welcome to my live. Is it a Haji? Welcome to my live. Hello. Welcome. Hey. Where are you tuning in from? Thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm going to um, do something just a little bit different this time. I'm actually going to, I made some notes. Normally I just read from, oh, Istanbul. Welcome, welcome. Is it Ahalji? Brown, welcome from Istanbul. Welcome to my live. Thank you for joining. Yeah, I'll wait about another minute and I'm just going to get started and I'll uh, just give people time to get on if they need to get on or want to. And if not, they can just uh, see the recording. Um, but obviously you all want the live, so here I am. I'm coming to you live, so you can come join join me. Or you can catch it later on uh, Facebook Live. You can just hit on there. Hey, Joanne, welcome to my live. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey. And so I'll just do like a little quick uh, devotional, a little snippet, something that I was, it was impressed on my heart. So I hope you all enjoy it and God be the glory for it. Um, it's different. It's different. Hey. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to open up in a quick word of prayer. Okay, Jobo, St. Fairman, welcome. Hi. Just tell me where you all logging in from. I see a lot of people from different places. Thank you. It's different time zones. Um, so it's like one, I think it's like a little, little bit out the one here in Georgia. Welcome. Thank you. And so I'm going to open up in a quick word of prayer, and then I'll go ahead and get started. Um, Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name. We honor you today, God. We magnify you, for you are such an amazing God. And everything you do, God, you do so well. And we just want to say thank you today, God. You said everything we should give thanks for. This is the will of the Father concerning us in Christ Jesus. So no matter what we're going through today, no matter what it looks like today, we want to say thank you. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for this opportunity to be before your people. I dare not take it lightly, God, that you would allow me to do so, God. So I pray that you will forgive us of our sins. 
and that you would create in us a clean heart, renewing us a right spirit. Prepare the hearts for your people to hear your word, that they, they are edified and you are glorified. Use me. Help them not to look at me, to see, but to see you, God. Hide me behind the cross. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So what I got this morning, uh, I thought I was going to do something totally different uh, since I was going to be doing a live. But the spirit moved the same way, gonna, whatever he want to do, whatever he wants to do. And the name of my topic is going to be guilty as charged. How does that sound? Guilty as charged. And I'm going to use the scripture verse, James 2 and 10. And it reads, whoever breaks one commandment is guilty of breaking them all. Then it says, if someone obeys all of God's laws except one, he or she is guilty of breaking them all. Wow, I'm going to read that again. Whosoever breaks one commandment is guilty of breaking them all. If someone obeys all of God's commands and he breaks one, he's guilty of them all. And so I'm going to read the Ten Commandments for us. And it says, number one, it says, you shall not have no other God before me. Number two, you shall make no idols. Number three, you shall not take the Lord's name in vain. Number four, keep the Sabbath day holy. Number five, honor your father and your mother. Number six, you shall not murder. Number seven, you shall not commit adultery. Eight, you shall not steal. Nine, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. The last one, 10, you shall not covet. And so these are the 10 commandments, beloved. And if you say, I have done, I don't do any of those things. I don't, I don't have any other gods before you, Lord. I don't make idols. I'm not, I have not taken your name in vain. I keep the Sabbath day holy. I honor my father and my mother. I, sh I have not murdered anybody. I haven't committed adultery. I have not stolen anything. I have not bared false witness. I have not lied on my neighbor. And I have not coveted. it. He, James 2 and 10 said, Whoso, whoever breaks one commandment is guilty of them all. But if someone obeys all of the laws and just keeps and just mess up on one, they're guilty of them all. And so, beloved, I come back to my topic, guilty as charged. When I was reading that this morning and you know how we get self-righteous and we start saying, oh, I can't believe he or she is doing that. I can't believe they did that. But then we think about something where we, hmm, we might have we might have not kept the Sabbath day holy. That means we're guilty of them all, right? And so, I thank God that God sent His Son Jesus as a propitiation. That means as an atonement. His blood made an atonement for our sins, beloved. Aren't you glad today? Aren't you glad today that? All of these Ten Commandments, if you kept nine of them and you missed one, you're guilty of them all. No one can talk about anyone because if we're looking at this, the law, God sent his son Jesus as a perpetuation, as an atonement. His blood covered our past, our present, and our future sins, beloved. Aren't we grateful for that? If Jesus had not come, we would all be guilty of all of these things because of our blood and our sin nature and because we as humans could not keep the law. And then I remember what it says in Romans. And it says, um, was the law not valid because Jesus came? And certainly not. 
the law, the only way we know what sin is because there is a law, because there was a law. And so now, thank goodness, thank God that because of Jesus, we're no longer under the law. If you are a believer and you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, hello, Ella, welcome to my live, welcome. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are no longer under the law. You are under grace. Praise God, because the Ten Commandments is the law. It is the law of God. And if you, if you miss one, if you miss one, you obeyed all of these laws, excluding one law that you couldn't get right. You're guilty of them all. And where it says in James 2 and 10, what I read before, it said, whosoever breaks one commandment is guilty of breaking them all. If someone obeys all of these laws, say, oh, I got this. Oh, I'm a super Christian. I got this. Oh, thank you, Lord. I got all this. I don't steal. I haven't killed anybody. I haven't used the name in Lord's name in vain. I haven't swore against the Lord. I haven't been like on God. You know, people say on God, you know, using the Lord's name in vain. And we don't even realize it because of ignorance. We don't really know what we're doing. We said, uh, you sh I have not taken any other gods before you, Lord. I call on Jesus, but I'm worshiping something else or um, worshiping another God. Or I shall not make any, you shall not make any idols. If you idolize your children, idolize your car, idolize your home, you idolize celebrities, whatever you idolize, you're guilty of them all. We are guilty of them all. On Saturdays or Sundays, whatever day you keep, you decide to keep holy, the Sabbath day. We cooking on Saturdays, cooking on Sunday. We doing, we traveling, we shopping, we doing everything on our Sabbath day. So if you have not kept in, you might be keeping a Sabbath day holy, but you cursing people out. You murdering people. You haven't honored your mother and father. You disobeying your mother and father. I mean, all these things that the Ten Commandments. If you done them all, if you kept all of them except one, you're guilty of them all. So it's not like, oh, I do this, but I don't do that. I do this, but I don't do that. Praise God. Thank you for Jesus. And like I said, we would not have known sin except there was a law because now we know what's right and what's wrong. Because when you put something in a law, like if you're driving down the street and you know that the speed limit is 70 and you're going 90. You wouldn't be breaking a law if they didn't have it out there and you wouldn't know what it was. But now because there is a sign out there that says speed limit 70, minimal 65 or 50, then you know when you're going 90 that you're doing something wrong, right? And so that's the same thing with the law. The law was not abolished because Jesus came. It was fulfilled. The law is still the law. But because we could not keep the law, because we're all guilty of, we're guilty of them all if we even do one. If we if obey one, all of them, and, and don't obey one, we're guilty of them all, right? So, beloved, just because, just be, thank God that Jesus came, that now we're under grace rather than under the law. The law did not lose its value because Jesus came and we're under grace. The law is still the law. It was fulfilled. It didn't come to be abolished. It didn't come to be done away with. It still is the law. And so I pray, uh, beloved, that you know that we are guilty as charged. Guilty as charged. Welcome to my live, Debbie. Welcome. Happy to have you. And so what it says, I wrote down, I'm guilty. But because of Jesus's, Jesus Christ's blood, I am declared not guilty. Romans 3, 24 says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Thank God for his blood. The blood of Jesus justified us, not because we weren't guilty, because we were guilty as charged. We were guilty as sinners. Romans 3 and 23, we all sin and come short of the glory of God. The 24 said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Well, all in, all in 23. Hello, Marlon. Welcome to my live. 
Um, and I even wrote down the just the uh, definition for justification. It's the act by which God moves a willing person from the state of sin, injustice, injustice to the state of grace called justification. I'm going to read that again, beloved. It says justification is the act by which God, not man, God moves a willing person from the state of sin. Like they were, in, we were sinners. We were, we did it. Remember, we're guilty as charged. That's the topic for today. Guilty as charged. He, God moved the act by which God moves a willing person from the state of sin. We were willing to sin. We sin. And it's called injustice to the state of grace. It's called justification, beloved. And so as I go on and I read in James 2 and 12, it says, so speak and so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty, which is our grace. For judgment is without mercy to the ones who has not shown mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Beloved, we are guilty as charged. But thank God for he's sending his own son who knew no sin to become sin for us all. So thank God for Jesus. God in his great mercy did not give us what our sins so rightly deserve, beloved. We're guilty as charged. But just we're justified through Christ Jesus. But God took us a, a, a willing, sinful person and changed them from the state of sin to a state of grace. Oh, what a mighty God we serve, beloved. You might say, I don't do this. I don't steal. I don't kill. I haven't killed anybody. I have not committed adultery. I am not. A, I don't lie on my neighbors. I love my neighbors. But you're not keeping a Sabbath day holy. You're not uh, honoring your father and mother. You're talking, talking crazy to your parents. I know I used to do that. Thank God my mom and I are best friends. Now, hey, mama. I love her. So I love my dad. I love my family. But, you know, those things that we've done in our past that we're sorry for, that, like, I feel bad that I used to talk back. I feel bad about that. And I could have already been gone because I didn't do that right. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't murder. Thou shalt not murder. I didn't murder anybody, but I probably murdered somebody with my tongue. I probably said a whole lot of stuff that I shouldn't have said, but that's my way of looking at murder because I have not killed anybody. Thank God I haven't murdered anybody. Um, we all probably didn't took something we had no been to take it. You know, when I was little, I think I took something out of a store when I was little. And when the police came out and he said, you saw so-and-so, so-and-so, I was little. Thank God I ain't never stole nothing from that day for. I think I was about um probably about I was probably about maybe twelve or something, ten or twelve. But I bet you I didn't do that no more. That was God's way of saying, This ain't what we doing. Thank God for Jesus. So I don't know what your sins are, beloved. I don't know what you've gotten into or what you haven't gotten into. It's not for me to know. My thing is for me to know what I have done and what God has delivered me from and what God has. His grace is sufficient for me and his grace is sufficient for you that we're not under the law. If you are a believer and you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're not walk, You're not under the law. You're under grace. So don't let anybody condemn you because God didn't, does not condemn us, beloved. But do we continue in sin because we know that we're under grace? He said, God forbid, in the book of Romans, God forbid that we continue in sin. Because every time we continue in sin, we crucify him afresh. But we are grateful to God for sending his son to pay his blood to pay a price that we owe but couldn't pay as because we were sinners, right? So, but thank God Jesus, God sent his son as a perpetuation for our sins, as an atonement for our sins, because our blood was stained through Adam's nature. We were born in Adam's nature. So I were already stained in sin because of Adam and Eve, what they did in the Garden of Eden, right? 
And so thank God that we could not keep the commandments. We could not keep the law. And he knew that we were going to mess up. We were going to go and we might not murder anybody, but we were going to go and using the Lord's name in vain. We were going to go steal something. We were going to go and covet our neighbors. Our neighbors got something nice. We're going to covet it and we want it. So God knew we were going to do something. And so God sent his own son to pay that sin debt that we owe but could not pay. And so God is such an awesome God. And so I love you, God, for that. Just love you, God, for that. He is such an awesome God and his great mercy his great mercy towards his children. He is such an amazing God. And that's why I'm doing a live, y'all. My dog is over here whining. But uh, she knows that when I do a video, I'll let her sit in the chair. But today I'm doing a live and I don't want her in the chair. So I had to go ahead and say that. So if y'all hear her whining, that's what it's about. But that's what live does for you, right? Because y'all want it live. That's right. That's what you all said. Marlon, you happy? <laughs> but, um... Uh, but uh, I got sidetracked. But, beloved, God is so awesome. He is so amazing. He already saw ahead where we were going to be in trouble. So he sent his son. He sent his son on the cross to die and let his blood be shed for the remission of our sins, beloved. So thank God that we were guilty as charged. We deserved everything that we were going to get from that sentences, but God in his great mercy said, no, he said, no. Hey, Miss Bussy. Hey, welcome to my live. And so thank you. Thank you, God, that you saw, you saw, you loved us so much that you saw that we were guilty as charged, but you knew like when I read it, I'm going to read James 2 and 10 again, because I think that is just so awesome that people don't understand. Whoever breaks one commandment is guilty of them all. If someone is obeys all of God's commands and is guilty of breaking one, then they're guilty of them all. You might be like, oh, yeah, I don't do this. I don't do that. But you do that. It's something that you do as human beings. Welcome to my live, Jerome. Hey. Like, we all guilty of something. So we could not keep the law. That's why Jesus had to come. Do we continue in sin? Because we know that God forgives us. The word says, God forbid that we do that. We continue to want to live right. Because we are no longer, because Jesus came, we are no longer bound or slaves to sin. Now we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We're slave to holiness and we're slave to righteousness. In the book of Romans chapter 7, this will break all of this down for you. And it will show you, and that's where I actually started at Romans chapter 7. But I ended up in um, Romans chapter 6, well, 3. And it brought us, brought me all the way through and it gave me some scriptures in, I think, in six. And where it says, um, it just talked about different scriptures where it says, having been set free from sin, you became slave to righteousness. The Romans 6 and 19. He said, I speak in human form because of weakness of your flesh. So just as you... Um, he said, just as you per, uh, presented yourselves to sin, to uncleanliness and lawlessness, now you can present yourself because of Jesus Christ and his blood. And now under grace, we, we can present ourselves to be slaves of righteousness and holiness. And he says, what fruit did you have then in the things which you are now ashamed of? Like when you're sinning, what fruit did we bear from that? He said, for the end of those things are death. Now you have good fruits, fruits of holiness and the end everlasting life. And it's then it's when it goes in to say Rome. That's Romans 21 uh, and 22. And it goes in 23 where it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. 
And so that's where it kind of took me, the cross-reference scriptures took me back to Romans chapter 3, and it took me to Romans chapter uh, 6. And so it's just talking about God is saying that we no longer have to be slaves to sin because Jesus Christ died on the, on the cross for our sins, and he, his blood covers our past, present, and future sins, and that we do not we do not bear any good fruit that we're ashamed because, you know, sin brings shame because we don't even want to talk back to God after we sin. We want to go and be like, you know, Satan wants you to think that, oh, you should just leave that alone. You ain't going to never make it. You just messed up. You might well go on and just throw in the towel. Whatever you're trying to do, child, please, you ain't going to be able to make it. You don't, you just can't do right. But we've been justified by faith in Christ Jesus. We're not, God didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save the world from sin. And so now we are justified by faith through Jesus Christ. That means we were a willing participant and God knew our flesh was weak because it says in, in uh, Romans chapter seven, in our flesh dwells no good thing. And so God knew in our weakness. So when we want to do right, we do wrong. And so Paul is talking to the uh, the Jewish people. He's talking to the Romans. What he's trying to say, when I want to do right, I do wrong. When I want to do good, evil is always present. So who is doing it now? It's not me who's doing it. It's sin that's dwelling in me. It's sin that's dwelling in our flesh. That's why we have to be more in the spiritual realm, more in the spiritual mindset. Because when we feed the, whichever one we feed the most is the one that's going to be strong. And so when you find yourself or I find myself doing things that I should not be doing, that's when I know that I'm not feeding my spirit man. Because the one that you're feeding the most is going to have the strength. The one that is not being fed is going to be malnourished. And so when you're walking in practic practicing sin, that means you're not feeding the flesh. You're feeding the flesh more than you're feeding the spirit. And that's how the one that is the strongest overpowers the other. And God knew that our flesh, and that's our flesh was no good. And Paul said, in our flesh dwells no good thing. He said, oh, wretched man, who would deliver me from this body of sin? That's Jesus Christ. His blood is the only, his grace is the only reason that we're able to walk out this life because we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so as my topic said, beloved, we're guilty as charged. And when you go to court and they say, how do you plead? Thank God I had to go in there, but I think one time, I think I had a ticket. I did a no-lo or something like that, and that was thrown out. That was like maybe 25 years ago, but thank God. But when you go to court and they say no-lo, welcome, Miss Hattie, to my live. Welcome. And it says, uh, how do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? But before Jesus came on the scene, and even now, we are guilty as charged. But thank God, Jesus God loved us so much, beloved, that he sent his son who knew no sin to become sin for us all. Amen. And so I pray that today that you would walk in liberty, that you would walk in freedom. And when you fall short, because he said, Romans 3, 23, we've all sinned. In, that's Romans 6, 23. We've all sinned and come short of glory of God. But in Romans 3 and 23, the ways of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we've all seen it come short of the glory of God. No, not one. If you guilty, if you guilty of one, you guilty of them all. If you obeyed all of them except one, you struggling in one, you guilty of them all. That's why we have to walk in grace. And when you don't give grace to other people and you don't show mercy to other people, that's how you're going to be. You and I are going to be judged. And so if we walk in liberty and we spoke in earlier, if we walk in liberty, that's when we'll be able to be judged the way we, because we are going to be judged. So when we get to walk in, we walk in liberty and we give mercy towards other people. That's how we're going to be judged merciful. But if we're not giving anybody mercy and we holding that fist, that iron fist and uh, toward everybody and we not giving any people any breaks, that's the same thing that's going to happen to us. So I pray that I said something today that you can walk in freedom, beloved. Walk in freedom. That's what Jesus came. The law, the law is still the law. The law did not lose its validity. 
the law. Jesus said he didn't come to, to, to abolish the law. He came to fulfill the law. And so when you know what the word of God says, beloved, that's when you can walk in freedom. You can walk in liberty. Like, Lord, I'm sorry about that. I messed up. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, Lord, forgive me. First John 1 and 9 says, if I confess my sins, you are faithful and you are just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness, beloved. But it does not mean that we won't have consequences. Because if I go, my daughter, my grandson come to me and they do something wrong and they confess it. I might be like, you know what? You know, I'm glad you were honest. But sometimes some things are warranted to have consequences, especially if I've told you not to do it over and over again. So, like, you, we might get to choose our sin, but we don't get to choose our consequences, beloved. And so, but God is a forgiving God. He's a loving God. And he came that we walk in freedom, that we walk in liberty, and that we are no longer slaves to sin. Yes, we are guilty as charged. But we've been justified through faith in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so we don't have to walk in lawlessness lawless, lawlessness, and uncleanliness and be enslaved to sins. Now we have Jesus Christ that died and paid a price, shed his blood for our sin, for the remission of our sins. Now we can walk in holiness and righteousness because of that, beloved. Hey, Miss Patricia, welcome to my live. And so I just pray that uh, today that I said something. Or I've shed something, some light on some things that you were walking in bondage. You were walking in, in defeat. That is not how God wants his children to live, beloved. He don't want us to walk with our heads held down, looking all beat up. And then we trying to minister to somebody and we tore up ourselves. That's not what God desires for us to do. God wants us to live an abundant life. He wants us to live a good life. He doesn't want us to live in the flesh where we glorify the flesh and we live so that the flesh is controlling our lives and we're bound to sin. That's why Jesus came, so we can be liberated, so we can be set free from the hands of the enemy, beloved. Now, is Satan going to come and try to make us conceal our sins or try to make us feel bad for what? And we should feel bad for sins. Anything we do that's not of God, we should feel bad. And we should have such a sorrowful heart about it that we should repent. That means we no longer want to do that. We're going to turn away from that sin and forsake it. But when we ask for forgiveness, he said in 1 John 1 and 9, if you confess your sins, you call sin what God calls sin. You confess your sins. He is faithful and he is just to forgive you, and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But we all know that it's only because of the grace of God that we have not been consumed beloved. And so I'm not talking to you because I have it all together. I'm talking to you because the same word that I have to read before it gets to you, I have to go through it and say, ouch. And so when he shares it with me, I'll come and share with you because I'm my brother and sister's keeper. I wouldn't want you to go around the corner like I was telling my daughter. If they're shooting around the corner, I just got shot. Why you got to go around there and get shot too? I told you they shooting. I got shot and it hurts. There is no need for you to have to go get shot too. It seemed like you would want to listen to some, I have to say, so you don't have to get you a wound. Because if we both wounded, I really can't help you because we just leaning on each other. So, beloved, I pray that you are blessed. And I know that we are all guilty as charged. But by his grace and mercy and God loving us and sending his son, Jesus, we can actually be declared not guilty, beloved. We can be declared not guilty through, this, through Jesus Christ. And do we continue in sin just because we know he forgives us? God forbid we do not. We should want to do better because of that great love that God has for us as his children beloved. So amen. I pray that today, if you don't know Jesus Christ and a part of your sins, today is a great day to do so. And all you have to do is be willing to admit that you are a sinner. Be willing to turn from your sins. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and that God raised him from the, from the grave on the third day with all power in his hand. And by faith, beloved, you are saved. Get in a Bible-based church and where a preacher and teacher can teach you about what the word of God says and you'll be able to give a reason of hope that lies within you, beloved. We are guilty as charged, but thank God for Jesus. 
his son, his blood, that we are justified through faith. And so he took a sinner, a willing sinner. He took a willing sinner and changed that state of mind and actually gave us over to freedom and righteousness. That's justification, beloved. And I think I might have said my... It says, the act by which God moves a willing person from the state of sin. Because we was willing to sin. But we know sin is pleasurable, but only for a season, right? We get to choose our sin, but we don't get to choose our consequences, beloved. And it says, injustice. And it's to the state of grace called justification, beloved. We have all been justified through Christ. If we accepted Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we justified by faith through God, through his son, Jesus. So we don't have to walk in shame. We don't have to walk in defeat. We've been declared not guilty, beloved. And so I, I started my title with guilty as charged, but we have been declared not guilty through his son, Jesus. Amen. Do you all have any prayer requests? If you have prayer requests, I'll actually pray for you. You can just put them in the comments. I'll actually have specific. You can DM me because a lot of you do uh, DM me and I can pray for you. We all need prayer and I'll actually close out in the word of prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, I followed your assignment. You are such an amazing God and we thank you, O God, that although we are guilty as charged, you have through your son, Jesus, you have declared us not guilty. And I just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your blood, your son's blood. Thank you for giving, letting his blood be a propitiation and atonement for our sins. Thank you for all those who listen to me on the live. Thank you for all those who will listen to me later on that you will go ahead of this word and that you will let it fall on fertile ground, Lord, that you will do what it is you want to do, God. Have your way. Move on the hearts of your people. Be glorified. Let them not see me. Let them see you, God, because I have to go to you myself. I'm just a person with a message, and I'm thankful that you've allowed me to speak to your people. Be glorified. Let your people be edified, and let Satan be horrified. Get all the glory because it belongs to you, God. Have your way. Do what only you can do. In Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Have a good day, y'all. Bye. Thank you for joining my live. Bye.